Hello, my name's Richard. I'm the pastor at the King's Church in Adelston in Surrey. And at the moment, we're looking at the, the subject of being a church. Seems pretty simple, right? Just to be a church. Um, and hopefully it is reasonably simple. Um, at the moment, we are doing that and we're going to be looking today at how we accept one another. Now, in many situations in our world, um, acceptance comes through some kind of proving yourself um, to, to, to get in, if you like. Um, there are rites of passage. Some of them are very clearly defined and some of them are a little bit more subtle and suggested. But there are, there are things that we need to do or fulfil before we can be fully part of a group in, in many situations. Um, so you may need to reach a certain standard before you can join the club, whatever the club is. Or you may need to uh, massage uh, the people who are in power, maybe your, your boss at work or just people above you may, may need to massage their egos um, to, so that you can progress up the career ladder or, or whatever it is. Um, you know, maybe in, in families where you have a couple, they've got engaged um, and the potential spouse, they really need to prove themselves to the potential in-laws to, to be accepted in part of the family, um, that kind of thing. Uh, or maybe it's just as simple as um, you have to behave or dress in a certain way, or at least feel you do, it's before you can be accepted um, and, and be part of the group or the clique. The message really is, on the whole, if you want to come in, you need to be like us, you need to do like us, you need to think like us, you need to speak like us, you need to assimilate to us. And so value judgments are made on whether people fit in, whether they're getting things right, whether they're just basically acceptable or not. And the radical message of Jesus is this. It comes in, in is contrary to the way the world works in that way. That The radical message of Jesus is this, is that the unacceptable are acceptable. The unacceptable are acceptable. And you see that time and time again as you, as you look at Jesus and his ministry. Um, he would hang around with unclean lepers, people that nobody else would even just dare to go near. Um, he would hang around with foreigners and even the foreigners that were ruling over his nation. He would hang around with hated collaborators, immoral women, um, the poor, uh, the demon-possessed, people who smelled of fish, even noisy children. All those who are unacceptable, he seemed to accept. And before you think, well, I'm not really like those unacceptable people that we find in the scriptures. They're, they're, it's quite far removed for me. In fact, I've made Jesus' job just a little bit easier because I'm reasonably acceptable myself. Before you start thinking along those lines, don't forget that the Bible says all our righteousness is like filthy rags before God. Meaning we're all unacceptable before God in one way or another, yet Jesus accepts us nevertheless. He accepts us, you, me, warts and all. And that's the good news. In fact, that's the, in essence, um, what the Christian message is all about. And so the early church were taught to accept one another, um, not on the basis of whether the person was worthy, uh, not on the basis of whether they fit in socially, not on the basis of whether they came from the same background, not on the basis of whether they had the right education or family connections, but they were to accept one another simply as Christ had accepted them. And if you bear in mind the weird and wonderful list of people that Jesus hung around with, then you will realise that that's a pretty wide standard of acceptance. In Jesus, in the church, the misfits fit. The outsiders are the insiders. The unacceptable are acceptable. And that includes you, that includes me. That includes people who don't have the right clothes to wear. That includes um, people whose lives are troubled by broken relationships. That includes those who are addicted. That includes those who don't have enough money and those who do have too much money. That includes those who have no friends and that includes some people who actually have too many friends. And you see, the tragedy often I find is that people who feel, they just, they, I, I talk to people outside church and they, they feel as though like they're, they're not good enough to be part of the church or even come to church. And that misses the whole point of Jesus. 
it misses the whole point of church, of communion. I mean, the whole thing, it's, it just misses the point because none of us are good enough. But we are accepted by Jesus, nevertheless. And so the church is to accept one another just as Jesus accepts us. And if the church portrays something different to that, then actually, I'd say it needs to repent. If the impression that we give as a church is that you have to be a certain class of person, um, in dress in a certain type of way, or know certain things, or conform to certain types of norms, uh, then we're not accepting people as Jesus accepts them. Accepts them, and and things need to change. I'll be honest with you. Just like our love for one another, as we looked at last week, um, um, in, in that Jesus is the model, so Jesus is also the standard in the way we need to accept others. Now, the early church, they were told um, in this, in part of this teaching, that the strong should accept the weak. Those whose faith was stronger were to bear with those whose uh, faith was weaker. And so 2,000 years ago, um, in many ways, that looked like the weak in faith, <clears throat> they, they should, thought you should eat, um, you sh sorry, you shouldn't eat meat. That was one of the, the big things. You, you see that happen uh, quite a few times in the, in the New Testament. They, they, would, they would say, the, the weak in faith, that you should only eat vegetables for religious reasons. We'll go into that another time. But the strong in faith knew that all food was okay to eat and because Jesus brings freedom and just eat, all food is good. But those strong in faith who were free to eat, and that included meat sacrificed to idols, um, which is, well, get your head around that. They were not to judge and look down on those who felt they could only eat vegetables. And so in doing that, there's not to be any kind of like, oh, here we go, the vegetarians are here. You know, none of that. It was just, no, we accept you. We don't uh, judge you. And equally, those who only ate vegetables and thought those other People are just eating everything, you know, they, they're just not doing, they're not doing it right. They were not to look at those people and condemn them, thinking that they were breaking the rules. Accept one another just as Christ accepted you. Bear with the weak. Now, how does that translate today? Well, I think it translates today in, in ways like this. Um, those who seem to have their lives all together are not to look down on those whose lives are a little bit frayed around the edges and maybe even frayed in the middle. Um, those whose mental health is good and strong are not to judge those whose mental health is pretty shaky. Um, those whose confidence and attitude is kind of high and full on, uh, they're not to scorn those whose confidence and maybe attitude is a little bit low. Those who feel that they have total freedom, not to poo-poo those who seem bound and tied up in knots. See, Jesus accepts the weak and the strong, and so should we. This is how it is to be his church. So just to wrap up, I want to ask you, you know, who do you know who's weak at the moment? Accept them, love them. So many of us at the moment are feeling very fragile, aren't we, after this long time of, of COVID. Right now, uh, yeah, there's a lot of sort of fragile and, and, and weak feeling people. And the scriptures say, bear with us, accept us, love us. And in doing so, we follow the way of Jesus.